You're listening to the Saturday Night Gaming Podcast, Starfall, run by one of our GMs, Tony Stevens. Hope you enjoy. another exciting episode brought to you by Saturday Night Gaming. This is Tony Stevens presenting to you Heavenscape Starfall. We are entering the final moments of the great climactic decisions that will affect this region forevermore. And the party is split in half because they make great decisions together. So, before too much time passes, I want to remind you, click like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to go back and listen to all the great episodes leading up to this point and find out what went wrong. But before I go too far in describing all of the crazy story elements and the animosity between NPCs and the horrific dragons and beasts that are going to eat little Yip Yap, let's go ahead and have our cast and crew introduce themselves, their characters, and a little bit about what's going on with them right now in the story. We'll go ahead and start at my left. I'm Ronnie. I'm playing Rogoth, and he currently is... On his way back to Trigal to collect on some bounties with Yip Yap. Um, that would be me. I'm Yip Yap, and I'm played by Brady. Um, yep, I'm headed back to Trigal. I gotta, I gotta escort poor little Roga. You know he needs the protection. Poor little Roga. Pretty sure he's not poor or little. Yes, he's poor in it. He's a poor little man. I got you. Road Brothers. <laughs> I'm Casey, playing Ravina, and I am currently with the pastor. But beyond the pasture. <laughs> Alright, and you said. And watched as he uh, killed My someone. name is John, and I don't want to reveal too much about my character, because uh, it's a secret. Uh, but. It'll come out over His time. last name is Laid. <laughs> Mr. Laid. Mr. Laid. Hey, sometimes that's my last name, too. <laughs> <laughs> and go ahead. <laughs> hey, everyone. This is Noel Jostein being played once again by the incredible, intelligent, uh, and gorgeous Ryan Ladner. Uh, Some even say humble. Some would even say humble. <laughs> Not many. Not many. <laughs> Me, for sure. And uh, I would say last last session went pretty good for me. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm currently uh, on my way to the north to hey. try to put a stop to the endless winter. Seems like something that the power of Aiden should be able to handle. Indeed. All right, so as we enter this session, um, I'll go ahead and actually start in Trigal real quick as Rogoff and Yip Yap have run into the city carrying the heads of slaughtered enemies. Yep, that's me. What do you do? I would like to make an announcement to the townspeople. Just run out in the middle. Hey, yo! Yes. And I would stand up and I say, I'm looking for Scully. Where is he at? Or anyone who will take these heads. There's a man that's sitting on a, a barrel and he belches. <laughs> he starts laughing. Oh, Scully. Old man Scully. He went out to the Skaha Woods. What? He no. goes to meet it. Me that's near. where he went. Oh, my. Is there anyone else here paying for the bounties for these? Yeah, no, we, we gave Scully all of our money to pay for that. Oh, my. We trust him. He's only got one eye. How far can he get? It's not like he's a strong fighter at all. Why would you give the dude one eye money to count? That's what I want to know. Because he's, he's focused. He's got one eye focus. 
Okay, bad. responsible. Okay, buddy. Will you just take this? I don't feel like searching for him. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? Uh, will, will you just will you just take this? Take take what? These this head, of course. See There's that? a head of a beautiful woman. Why are you holding? And she's a fake creature. Why are you holding the head of a beautiful fake creature? Is that what she was? She was making noise. You can tell by her ears. Look at them. They're kind of pointy nibs on the ends of them. Huh. No markings on the face. She probably had beautiful songs. Yeah, she, she, we found her mewing on us in the woods. Can you believe that? Oh, that's crazy. Some say that if you listen to her songs, she'll tell you how to avoid your own death. Oh, for real? Yes. Oh, I didn't listen to it. Well, yes. she didn't listen to her own song. <laughs> <laughs> or she didn't. That's why she was wailing. That's why they say she's the wailing woman. She sees death coming. She just never avoids it. Okay, buddy. All right. Um, I wonder why anyone would want a pair to kill her, though. Because she was crying the whole time. People were trying to sleep, you feel me? Ah, hmm. uh, I would not like to touch you. You look rather no. slimy and small and grotesque. Uh, not like that. I wouldn't want you to touch me either. Well, don't ask me to do it again. No, I said, do you, do you like feel the emotions and power in my words? No, I'm a strong man. I have no emotions. Why are you crying like a weak child? I'm about, I'm smaller than a child, you feel me? You are? I will not touch you! I'll tell you that one small little lad. Okay, 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 I'll leave you alone. Yeah, Scully, he went, he, it's always going out and tallying up the monsters that go around Sky High Woods, and so he knows how much to offer bounty for. Mm-hmm. He should be okay, no one has ill will towards old Scully. I don't know about that, but... Quit metagaming, boy! <laughs> <laughs> my fault, my fault. I just, you know, I get these visions sometimes. No, you couldn't get visions of death. You killed her. <laughs> I'm, my apologies, sir. I'm headed on my way. Y yes, be gone. <laughs> Here's a book for your troubles. Ooh, look at that. And it's only 1949. What an odd percentage on the cents. What a discount. I love this. You know, so and look, it comes with a free dragon head. <laughs> oh, it's missing an eye. We're just like Scully. He didn't see it coming. <laughs> see what you did there? You're at least entertaining. All right, well, I'm going to go put this on my wall and tell everyone I did it. I mean, Scully's not here. He can't pay us, so. Old man McCleary, the dragon slayer. I yeah. love it. Yeah. Okay, buddy. We See you later, in. little creature. Bye. Killing innocent pretty women. What? She wasn't even innocent. She was looking at me funny. Uh, who wouldn't? Have you seen yourself, lad? No. -uh. You've got a six-foot sword dragon behind you. Okay, let's not make this whale on Yip Yap right now. I have a quest to do. No need oh, to insult good me. Good luck with that. Thank you. That's all you needed to say. You're welcome. See, now I don't feel attacked. Yes. Just so you know, getting back to the Star <laughs> Woods from here, it, it would put you at least five turns behind any of your, your teammates. But good luck to you. Okay. Bye. Bye. Now, deep in the heart of the Star Woods, mm -hmm. making well on their tracks towards the north, Strides the victorious hero, Noel Jostein, and his beloved companion, Ravina Crescentfire. You come upon the same caves uh, that you went in before, that you remember from your last visit mm -hmm. to these woods. And you know that this is actually you clearing the dangers of the woods, moving into the uncharted northern territories. This is not the cave that Yip Yap ran into, or is it? There was an interconnected cave system. Yeah. That is where he cut the hand off of this one thing and it almost killed him. And then he ran into this interconnected cave system. And Rogoff was having this nice little sit-down conversation with this old undead uh, founder of Clan Lewis. And then, you know, Jen Callis cut his head off. Mm. 
and Yip Yap stole a spear and then threw it into a lake. I remember all that. Yeah. <laughs> hey, man, that's awesome. Inside the sword. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, that's that's basically the the part that you would be at. So you'd be moving from this northern tip up into the uncharted snow territories. Well, hey, if you're down to keep moving further north uh, northward, you've been together for quite some time. The affections are growing strong between the two of you. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> She still looks at you like you're crazy. She did not consent to that. No, she didn't. Noel is real big on consent. Yeah, it's at least a D6 roll. <laughs> All right, so... I do have a lust cipher. Oh, you oh, do? Oh, wow. <laughs> What's the ethics of that? I don't know, but it only works on a level three, so... <laughs> Fall in love. <laughs> Against your will. What's love? Got to, got to do. Alright, I so. guess I would like to continue going in the direction I need to go in, unless you think it would be a good idea to roll perception for any reason. It's always a good idea. Actually, for the two of you. You would roll, basically we'll just roll this as like an, an intelligence defense. Oh, great. Um, let me see real quick. Uh, so yeah, roll it, let's do it for now on an 18 is the scale, and just roll it as an intelligence defense. If you want to lower it down, you can. Um, Alright, so that takes it down to a 15. Mm -hmm. It's a what, 18? 18 starting. I can bring it. I bring it down to a six automatically. Okay. With my defense and my asset and my edge. Sounds so, good. Let's go. Ah. But. All right. So you stop to make camp for the night because obviously this is like a long, arduous travel that you're making. Set up a little makeshift tent, hobbit hole, something like digged out snow and like started a little fire. Uh, you've snuggled away from each other because that D6 was not rolled. Oh, have my dragon sitting <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. You have these little itty bitty, <laughs> they're like this big. Like right now, these little drakes that are just basically like climbing around you, but they're part of your, uh, your swarm now. Nice. You know what this sounds like? It's okay. kind of like Game of Thrones. <laughs> I don't know how that happened. Their names are... Um, this is important. You better name them now. Flora, Fauna, and Meriwether. Write, write all of that down. Flora, Fauna, and Meriwether. What the... Are those the fairy godmothers? From or Cinderella? No. Sleeping Beauty. Sleeping Beauty, that's it. How do you know this? Uh, grew up in an age where you watched entertainment on the television. Okay. Yeah, it was more than just 15 seconds of mind-numbing. I don't even watch that, to be honest. It's more like 30 seconds. Oh, okay. That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> Not appropriate. So, All right. I 
have a blue, a red, and a... Orange is yellow. I guess. Oh, okay. I like that. I have an idea. What's up? I have a drink that I can call on. You can. To pick me up? You want to Uber me over? No. <laughs> to fly you. <laughs> to fly... No, blue, red, and green. Okay. To fly us... To this place. Over the... Yeah. Alright, so before you get Prince called... You've got this little campfire going... Your drakes and your finger are like snuggled around you. <laughs> and you start having this vision. Okay. And in the distance, you see this dark tower. Not the dark tower, just a dark tower attached to a larger castle. Uh, but within that tower, at its height, you hear pleas for help. Sounds like a small girl's voice crying out from the tower. Begging for rescue. And you know that this tower's only, you know, maybe a hundred miles north, 50 to 100 miles. It's, it's a distance. You'll see it. It's measured usually in this realm by cosmic cubic centimeters. Um, but I can't use those right now because those are copyrighted by this guy named me. Oh, yeah, I can use them. Cosmic cubic centimeters, you're at least 50 away uh, from this castle. But you know this. It's like it's resonating in your mind. This thing is telling you where it is, and it's crying for help, and it needs you. Save me! And then you wake up in a cold sweat. All of your critters scurrying around you going... So I'm guessing that's a convenient idea. Could be. Or a compelling notion. Who knows? Uh, but do me a favor and just above your name write Star Song. Star what? Song. S O N G. Okay. Alright. I'll keep track of that. Cool. So. You've summoned your drake, Prince. He struts over to you. Was he purple? Yes, there's purple and gold and some greens. He's from Louisiana. Hmm. <laughs> he always votes for the Saints. <laughs> Alright, so you want to ride the drake to get closer to this tower. Yes. Right? All right, so it can actually carry both of you on it. And the so, baby drinks. Yeah, because they're small enough to actually like hide in her cloak. They can learn. They can learn how to fly from the big drink. From Prince. Is his name Prince? It is Prince. Whatever happens to Jim Callis's drink? It mourns atop his grave on a daily basis. Is or is <laughs> any of his friends taking care of his drink? Uh, no, it mourns upon his grave on a daily basis. Oh, so... No. It just curls up there and has refused to eat. Oh, no. Someone better, what? like... Feed Some even face. say that a red fern has begun to grow. Mm -hmm. A red fern? Atop Jim Callis' grave. What's that mean? It's just where that grows. Is that going to be, like, some magic fruit or something? I don't know. Somewhere my drink is like... This is what it sounds like <laughs> the <laughs> drinks cry. <crack. laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. So as you're reaching into the skies, flying upon your drake, um, it would not be hard to see the tower, like, at all. It's just there. Like, it's huge. In the distance, it almost looks like it's built as a mountain itself until you realize that they are... That's no mountain. It's no mountain. <laughs> Those are actually crafted stones placed together into a large tower. Surrounded by nothing but ice and snow and blizzards. Hey, does that look a bit unusual to you? No, it looks pretty familiar. Okay, you've been here? I haven't been here. You vacation here? No. No? It's it's where she was, it was born. A, it's a vision that I got, or a dream I had last night. Okay. Aiden gives me visions all the time. I'd love to hear about it. Um, or well, not. You, you know, 
now? It's just the two of us on this train. <laughs> it's just the two of us. Uh, it was a girl or child crying out for help from a tower that looked like that. Mm. And she points towards the tallest of the towers at the center of this great, intimidating, dark castle. Mm. Almost seemingly too advanced in its architecture to be a part of your time and place. I wonder if my drape can take it. <laughs> Prince, to the tower! <laughs> Alright. Now, as you are getting closer, uh, I'm going to go ahead and have you... Are there any, like, creature Like... From this height? We can't, we wouldn't see them, or? Well, you could see some things moving on the ground, but getting like a rough estimate of like, how big is that, or what is that? But it, it does seem like there's some stuff on the ground somewhere in the huh. snow, but you're flying towards the tower, right? So, yeah. you know, what's the matter at this point? <laughs> Unless somebody was approaching by foot, trying to catch up, I don't know what it would matter. Just want to make sure. <laughs> All right, so, but at this point, though, with the blizzard and everything, I'm going to have you roll for the flight of the drake. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start you off at the 18 difficulty. You can run it as a speed defense maneuver to get the drake closer to the towers itself. Okay. Well, I'm skilled, so I can bring it down to a 12 at least. Okay. I feel like I had something else that helps me with speed, but maybe like a speed asset or something? Yeah, but I forgot to write it down when I changed my sheet, and so I don't remember exactly what it was. So I'm not going to... Yeah, I'll just roll on a 12. Okay. I could spend 7 int to fast travel us to the, <laughs> into the tower... <laughs> That is completely true. You could just appear inside the tower. Yeah. Uh, I'll just, I'm not great at snow, just FYI. <laughs> Whoa! Kool-Aid. So adeptly you maneuver <laughs> Prince through the storms. Just... And you go past all of these towers where, as you're flying past, you notice that there is movement inside. It seems like there are people on guard, but they can't see through the blizzard very easily, apparently. And you head straight for this tallest of towers, where Prince is able to latch on to the side. And you can climb around into one of the window holes of this tower. You're in a darkened, dank room. Seems like a imprisoned chamber within this room. I'll give you that right off the bat. Now, if you want to roll perception for the area, we're just going to go ahead and cap this at 15 on perception for the room. So 15, yes. I can only bring it to 12. 12, no. Oh, wait, no. Yeah, 12. Okay. 9. I can bring it to a 9. Okay. And Boom. 12. Yes. Okay. That is a nine, man. All right. Good thing you brought it down. All right. So we'll start with you, Ravina. Mm -hmm. You look and you notice that this is a chamber that has some form of a cage in it. Cage holding what? You're not sure. It's broken open and there are tatters of cloth and what seems to be like remains of bone in there. You look around and notice that there are no true reflective surfaces in the room, like no polished metal, no brass, no mirrors. Now, you sir, you look and you see that there seems to be some form of like a tattered curtain 
and you go to gaze behind it, and there seems to be some sort of strange box, like a locking box. Uh, but the lock that's on it doesn't seem too sturdy. It is just a box of like wood with like a brass lock on it. Okay. What's in the box? What's in the <laughs> box? <laughs> Do you want to open the box, or should I open the box? Do I need to roll to open the box? You can strike the uh, the lock of the box if you want to. Uh, but then it will become more powerful than you can possibly imagine. It is 12 to, to strike it. Oh, well, uh, and I'm pretty sure I can bring it all the way down to zero. If you can, then it's a free strike. Yeah. All right. <laughs> You actually hit it with your frost axe, it freezes the, the lock and then it shatters off and you open the box to find this crystal. About yay long, it's about six inches long, seems to be just this perfectly pristine, no cracks. It's a crystal with some sort of wow. red ooze inside of it. It's like a lava lamp. Looks like a lava lamp almost, but it's small enough that you can carry it. Cool. This looks cool. Let's take this. Okay. All right. What if we if we rub it? Will another genie come out? You can you can try. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna rub it. I'm not gonna stop him. <laughs> coo. Coo. Uh, this this is the first time you've felt human touch and Who's so very long. Me? Uh, you recognize that even within your domicile, uh, there is warmth of contact. I am inside the crystal. Yes. Yes. And I'm rubbing the crystal. Weird. It's a weird feeling. You can talk freely if you want to, to whomever is outside of your home. You can even choose to exit your home if you want. How about I just say, who's rubbing my crystal? And Why? <laughs> Does that thing talk? Nope. I'm out. <laughs> Did you drop it? <laughs> <laughs> ting, ting, ting. The crystal bounces across the floor. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm like a genie in crystal. I thought that could be the case. That's why I was rubbing it. You gotta rub me the right way. Yeah, well, rub me the right way. I'm just joking. All I'm right. Hold on. <laughs> Don't. Let's say. Ooh. <laughs> he runs to like grab the crystal again, and then Koo goes <laughs> and like shines out. It's like, hey guys. Yeah, I'm hovering. I'm, yeah, you're just I got all my off. limbs like this. Yeah. Hey, that does not look like a little child. Why did you think it would be a child? She said that she had a vision of a child that locked in this tower. Hey. No. no. You dream about me? No. Okay. There's a child in this tower in all somewhere. Us. Have you that's seen being held. Have you seen a child? There's a child within all of us. There is. Is that what that red stuff was? A child at one no. point? The red stuff is a part of me. Okay. Just like your organs are a part of you. And if I remove those organs, even though they aren't you, you will die. Well, they are me. They are you, exactly. They both are and are not you. I don't think, I believe they are. They t I, I don't think. You are the sum of all of this. One single part does not yes. define you. The mumbo jumbo logic going on here <laughs> is frustrating. I am both the crystal and the liquid. I'm so excited to get to be with you. For what? this part of the journey. What? Are you talking to me? Yeah, he's excited to be. This is just in my head. I'm That's just... really, um, <laughs> I felt, I felt the sarcasm in your words. The sarcasm was strong within you. How do you even know what sarcasm is? I know many things. I know the nature of living beings. When's the last time you went outside of this tower? Oh, I don't know, a couple months ago maybe? I don't know. Do you want to go for a ride on a drink? Sure, I'm not really doing anything right at the 
Should, I think we should find this child first. Oh yeah. Well, should we go to a different tower? I'm kind yeah. of a go with the flow kind of guy. And he jostles his body, and the liquid kind of jostles <laughs> inside him. <laughs> Where, uh, like, <laughs> my name, my name is Laid. Mr. Laid. Mr. Laid. Well, I'm Noel Jostein. Yes, Noel. Emissary of Aiden the Fire God. I haven't heard of him. Oh, you will. I am a follower of a different fire person. Oh. Are there lots of fire people here? His... The god's name is Lux, Luxion. You guys worship fire beings? Well, I mean, we worship fire gods. I worship the real, the true fire god, Aiden. And she worships some other thing. Some false it's god? It's called God uh, Luxion. Is your god false? No. He was before he said Aiden. He was. He was before Aiden. Oh. It's... He came before your God. How do you feel about that? I don't subscribe to that. Okay. And you guys are still friends? Do you guys talk religion a lot? Of course. I talk religion all the time. To each other. As if it's my job. Well, all right. This sounds very fascinating. I think I'll hang out with you guys a little bit. So, should we... Oh, yeah. Pick up my crystal. Go through... <laughs> Do... You can't pick it up? No, I can pick it up, but I want you to have it. Mm. <laughs> Yo! Is it just a loose crystal, or is it <laughs> not like, uh, like... Can we fashion like a necklace for it, a holder? <laughs> you could if you wanted to. Yeah. I, can I do it out of crystal? Like, I don't know how to do that. Like a crystal chain? Crystal chain, yeah. That's cool. <laughs> That's real cool. It blames. <laughs> Do you want to give him your bling? Hit his sink be dripping. Like, I, I, I take off, like, Some a chain that I wasn't wearing. Yeah. Like, somehow I just pull it from myself as though I was wearing a chain, a crystal. And then I pick up the crystal and I attach it to the crystal chain. It mm -hmm. melds together, kind of like how you would imagine, like, a liquid metal. Think of the crystal as being liquid, yet passes it in solid. It's very counterintuitive. It's like hard water. Yeah, it's hard water. And then I like lay it over your neck. I appreciate this. What I'm going to do is tie this. I'm going to fasten this to the uh, end of my axe right here. That's too. The crystal is. It's too uh, fragile. Here, let, I'll give it to someone else. I don't, don't think want, it is. You don't want to take it. I think you can. I think it'll be okay. I, think it'll I don't think you off. know what the crystal is. I take it. <laughs> Lady who has a false god. May I gift you your a crystal necklace? Sure. All right, kneel before me, <laughs> and I will I will lay it upon you, and swear to protect the crystal. It seems to me that if you're that worried about it being protected, that you would just carry it. I can't jump into Your the crystal self. I'm wearing. That makes no sense. <gasps> and I give it to you, and then I jump inside it. I am now in the crystal. Okay. This is my home. This is weird. This is the way it is. <laughs> well, can you lead us through this tower? Yeah, sure. Go up those steps. I'm sure there's steps over that way. Over. I actually, I know those things. You would know that there is a chamber. Yeah. There's Since a chamber. you appeared here, there is a chamber doorway, and there would be a series of steps leading down from the tower. Yeah, there you go. So I'm, I take it we're going to search the towers for the for the child. You want to do that? <sighs> Sounds fun to me. Yeah, yeah, sure. Can I perceive from the crystal, or do I have to come out of the crystal? Can you do what? Can I, like, scan or perceive from within the crystal? Uh, like, actually, when I'm sitting in the crystal, do I get, like, a big screen monitor of the outside world? Read the number right next to that for me. If you would, um, uh, on your new sheet, yeah, you should see. Yeah, so let's see. Blah, 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 blah. Inhabit the crystal. Is that it? Yeah. What's the uh, one fifty four? It's a skill item to inhabit crystals. Crystal. All right. Um, you can 
transfer your body and whatever you're carrying inside the crystal, at least the size of your index finger. While in the crystal, you are aware of what's going on around it, seeing and hearing through the crystal. So yes. Yeah. The crystal is amplifying the surroundings here. Now, it says you cannot take actions other than exit the crystal, though. But it seems like perception, because it says seeing and hearing, you can see and hear. So I would say perception, but you can't take an actual action against other things. Yeah, yeah. Until you exit. And it is an, ag an action to enter and exit. So I'm out. Like, oh no, you guys are in danger, and I'm out. And it's like, I can't help you out of my action. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so you want to scan the area, is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah, I want to perceive, like, any any potential, like, dangers they might encounter as they search around. Okay, and uh, what page was scan on? Scan is on page 179. Alright, so that's two end points. You scan an area of an equal size to 10 feet, uh, including all small creatures, short range, you learn whatever pertinent facts the GM feels you should know about the area. Uh, you may learn the wooden box controls or contains some sort of a magical artifact. Yeah, you can do this as an action. Two hit points, which you have that in edge. So... Oh, hey, so I don't have to pay for it because I already have it in edge. Correct. Yeah, nice. Um, so at this point, you can just roll... And you can roll against an 18 to scan the tower. Can I roll the... The cool... The cool die? Yeah. <laughs> All right. No way I can bring that 18 down. Huh? Okay. Yeah. You can. Oh, there is? Oh, sure. Well, can I bring it down? How much does that cost? I mean, I think you have, like, you have four efforts. Um, oh. Right in the face. <laughs> <laughs> So, first time you bring it down would be three points because you're using your two points to activate it. So, you can bring it down with three int, and then each time after that costs two. What would I bring it down to? It brings it down three points at a time as you bring it down. So, it's starting at 18. Yeah. And you are, I believe, skilled in perception. Yeah. So, that would actually bring it down from 18 to 12. And then if you want to buy it again after that, you give me three, that would take it down from a 12 to a nine. I think that's that's reasonable. That's below 50%, right, champ? That's, that's, right. that's good. Yeah, should it be more? All right. He looks to his new leader. I think you're good. And okay. you're like, you're a strange creature I've never seen on this planet before. Yeah. What is that? That is a six. I am never listening to you again. <laughs> now... I would tell you that you have about 13 XP. Wow. Really? So you oh, can spend okay. XP. Yeah. You uh, didn't tell me that. Yeah, I agree. I forgot to write it back after okay. I, I changed okay. all those points. I got it. Ro we roll. That's a lot of XP. So because, technically... Because he's not been using it. He's just been crazy. chilling inside a crystal inside of a tower after whatever quest he went 16? on to get. 16? 13. Yeah. <laughs> you can continue to re-roll with how many XP. Let's do it again. Okay, so... He has... <laughs> I'll do it over here. 11. That's 18! Wow. So yes, he has 12 left. No, 11, sorry. 11 left. 11. 13. All right. So you scan the tower with your perceiving mind... And you actually locate this energy resonance. Oh, the resonance. And you I'm tell resonating. these two, you're like, oh, I can resonate. Because you can. And you feel energy and it resonates with within yeah. you. And you're like a scry stone right now. You're like, listen, about five stories down, there is a large energy source. It is magical in nature, and it's resonating. And I can lead you to it. Lead you to it directly. Wow, that is an incredible gift that Aiden has 
chosen to be set upon you. If you say so. <laughs> and you've never heard that name before these people in your life. All right, can so. I, can I be telling him about Aiden as we're just preaching to him as you're walking down the yeah, stairs? tell me more yeah. about this Aiden. Tell me more, tell me more. I can probably like, roll, does he catch on fire? I can probably roll to try to um, convert me. Convert you. <laughs> All right, now, while y'all are doing that, deep in the snows, trenching along, you see Rogoth up to his thighs in heavy snow and ice as he has traversed all of the northern region to find the people that he was with. He sees no tracks from them, and behind him, there's just a hole in the snow that keeps on moving along. Like a sword sticking up out of the snow, <laughs> like a shark's fin, but you can't see Yip Yap because he is completely lower than this three feet of snow. Three feet? Yeah, just just the, the sword tip is acting like a shark's fin. Ooh, I'm gonna get dun 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 dun. <laughs> <laughs> dun, 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 dun. And that's just the noise of his jaw chattering because it's so cold. And I bite <laughs> Rogoff's <laughs> ankle. <laughs> I'm an ankle biter now. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Stop that. <laughs> My fault. I'm sorry. So there's no like tracks or anything like just see where they went? No tracks from them. But you can see in the distance there seems to be a large dark mountain. Well... Got the mountain. Might be treasure or loot there. He's talking to you, Yip Yap. You're the only person with him. You're gonna have to focus to his words because. What'd you say? Yeah, he's got snow. There his might, ears. there might be treasure, or loot, over there at the mountain. You that yonder out. mountain. Ah, treasure. Okay, okay. Let's go. You're gonna have to carry me though. I pick him up and put him on my shoulder. Right. Boom, son. All right. So you're carrying him along. Now I want both of you to roll for perception. Starting at 18. For and I am trained to carry. You are trained to carry. He's very easy for you to carry. I got three. Now we're snow blind, man. Seven. Do we see it? You are snow blind. That is true. Well, I've been in the snow away from the sun. <laughs> yeah, that's true. All right, so as you're moving along, you don't even notice as this large lump of snow behind you actually begins to move as well. And it creeps closer and closer. And Yip Yap's just sitting on your shoulder, and he's like, So... Let me tell you about this one time. This girl booped me, right? Because oh, yeah. that's what they do. They like to boot me because I'm Yip Yap, yo. I'm the most charming yeah. looking guy. I don't think I've told you the amount of game I have just to not make you jealous. But now you know Yip Yap has game. <laughs> just FYI, it is now lore accurate. Yeah. So you claim. No, it's now lore accurate. Therefore, Yip Yap has game. Therefore, we're going to go get this treasure. And I'm going to show you around the town. And we're going to get you some. Some what? Some friendly interactions, of course. Already have friendly interactions. Well, that's different. Now, just because I'm nice. Says <laughs> who? Rogoth feels the vibrations in the ground mm -hmm. as if a quake is about to occur, allowing him just enough time to defend himself. And since he's on your shoulder, he just counts as an asset. Okay. <clears throat> since an asset. he is an asset, that brings this speed defense roll down to a 24. 24. 
Just because he's nice, he said, he's, dude. He's an asset. You're an asset. I'll let you be an asset. And I'm letting him roll defense. Can I just push him in the way? Neither one of you perceived anything. I'm perceiving something right now. <laughs> let me <laughs> tell you. If only you'd listen to the song. Would have given you an additional asset. I still have her head with me. Can I, can I make her... What's the sigil of Namir? Say stuff? Do it. What's the sigil of Namir? The sigil of It's like... Namir. It's just like... So when you're with her... I believe you can use that as an asset because you chose to sweet talk her rather than fight her. Because right, she was a level... I'm going to use that as an asset. So that brings it down to what? 21. 21. 21. I mean, right. sometimes it pays to talk to him instead of yeah. kill him immediately. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I wasn't paid to kill this one. Yeah, that's true. You got a point. Man's got to do his job. Kill the last one, either. My man of my word. All right. Um, and then I'm specialized in speed defense, so I bring it down two more, so I bring it down to 18, right? Mm-hmm. Wait, no. No. Fifteen. Fifteen. Man, I'm trying to make things harder on myself. Alright. <sighs> nope. Nope. I'm glad to not spend anything. Don't want to use those XP, do you? No. Alright, so... A powerful wave of ice and quaking energy... Deal up to nine points of cold damage. Nine points. That's a lot. That's like one less than ten. So it's up to nine points, though. Therefore, it only does three. So. Now. This is what you can do to actually find out uh, the damage and whether or not you can break free. You give me a might defense roll. One, both of two, you. break free. Ooh, yes. So he wasn't able to get you away, but you can both roll might to see if you can con constitution like your. All right, I got a thing that I have an edge in might. Mm -hmm. <laughs> is this just a straight roll or? You can use any of your assets to try and bring it down, or your skills, or anything like that. I have an edge in might, and I also have a feat of strength, which is anything to deal with might, and brings it down again. So what's your total? What is it starting at? 24, right? Uh, it starts at 27. You were an asset for him in the speed defense, so that was brought it down to 24. <laughs> It ain't even ro worth rolling at this point. Just give up. And you can do how, bring it down how many times? Only twice. So if you brought it down twice for free, uh -huh. and that would get you down to 21. Uh-huh. That's when you'd have to start spending might to effectively... Man, but it's going to hurt me and get more might before I lose more. It's a conundrum, sir. Mm -hmm. You too. Alright. Um, I might try. Okay. Alright, I'm going to activate Muscles of Iron to make my yeast. Um, and then so that makes it 24 and I use my free might thing to make it 21. And then I lower it down two more. 18. Makes it 15. 15. One sec. All right, so you both got to roll a 15 here. Come on. Just a 15. Wait, so uh, every single one after the first one just costs two, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Oh, I rolled a five. Oh. 18. All right, so. Save me, Rogan. 
as this wave of cold energy hits you, you're like, and you strengthen up, and the fires from the sword actually keep you heated in, not frozen. But as Yip Yap falls off your shoulder, he's like, what the? And he's just frozen into an ice cube, standing on the ground. Yip Yap, stay there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And then you start, like, looking around, right? Mm-hmm. And, like, in the blizzard, you can see what kind of looks like a shadow lumbering towards you. For everyone's abilities and knowledge here. Drive is so funny sometimes. I You're drive. so funny, Drive. Why won't it just let me organize my folders the way I want? Well, it's when it restarts you at a certain point. That's when it's always a uh, pain in the pain in the keystroke. Like, why can't I just open up many panels? I would like to do that. Just be like it is in Windows. As, as many boxes as I want to view, I want to view those boxes. Just a little hint to anyone out there listening. It makes me want to do violent things. Now, for everyone else that's not there, this is what you would see. And yes, that's to scale. That little warrior standing next to that towering polar bear would be Rogoth size. Whoa! So it's a polar bear attacking? It's like in Lost. That's what your ocular sense is telling you. It's like a mammoth polar bear. Yeah. Maybe, like, uh, maybe the snow is driven. Driven you mad. Damn, that is a big dude. And like Yip Yap would probably be only like the size of one of its claws. Yeah. I imagine. Just saying. Alright, so now you're aware of what you're dealing with. Alright, this thing's a 27. Yes. Set it on fire. Actually, if you have any meat, throw it away from me. See what happens. I don't have any meat. Do you use the head I have on the back of me. It's meat. Just chuck it. At. Yeah, just take the fake head and, and throw it at this large creature. Exactly. I don't think anything could go wrong it's with like that. It's like a treat. Knowledge. That's a clear line of logic. The it's, head's frozen in the ice, though. Yeah, sit, sit, sit. Shake. It's, it's, a, it's a meaty ice pop. How many licks does it take to get to the fey head frozen inside? Oh. So you need to unfreeze me. <laughs> <laughs> let, me let me carry this fight. Who could argue with his logic at all? I'm just saying. <laughs> me? Can he speak from within the ice, though? No, um, no not even a little. <laughs> I think I've been around him long enough where... He's getting his knowledge. He just has tinnitus of my voice. Yeah, it's like tinnitus. <laughs> yeah. tinnitus. <laughs> Still talking in your ear. Alright. Now you can try to fight the big bear, or you can pick up the Yip Cube and run. I don't know, you know it's up to you. I have a better chance of fighting it than I do. I'm just here. Going. I'm just your humble guy. Well, I'm just letting you know, like, I have a better chance of fighting it than I do of running away. Well, you better clutch up. I can't help you. <laughs> All right, so... How far is it from me? Oh, it's going to be real close real soon. Okay. It's charging right at you. It has... It seems to not like anything in its territory. It's like the growls you're hearing are very aggressive. They're not like, I'm interested in what's going on. They're more like, I'm gonna eat you. Alrighty, so let's see. If only Noel had like a cell phone, he could be like, hey man, <laughs> this is my advice. Hey, we're up in this tower. I got pretty good reception up here. 
Put him in the crystal, take the crystal, throw the crystal. I have the crystal. He catches the crystal. He comes out of the crystal, tells him what you want. He puts him back in the crystal, throws the crystal back to the tower. It'll be like a postal service. Yes, I have adaptations, so the cold doesn't bother me. That's also true. The cold never bothered him anyway. Kidding. And you found him in a tower in the north. Ooh. How fragile. I also have ice powers. What? How fragile are you? All right, so I know I can take him down four times for free. Crystal. Okay. So that would be what? This, this fragile? So from 27 down to 24. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. From 24 down to 21. Mm -hmm. 21 to 18. I, think my, I do have some 18 defenses. to uh, 15. 15. Okay. I got to try. Um, I'm trying to save all my health pool for health, man. That's smart. Can't hit me. Eight nice! Points. 18! That's an extra two points of damage to you. Alright, so as it runs over to you, you're doing 14 damage? Yes. That's a lot of damage. As you stab into it, you notice how hard it is just to penetrate the skin at first. But then you're able to push a little bit further and you do see some blood come from this thing. It's not red. It's almost like an iridescent blue. And go. Oh, great. Oh, and now it's the, the creature's turn. Nuh uh. He went. You're frozen. You're frozen. Like creature's turn. Then it's your turn to try and break free. Then it's his turn, then the creature's turn. There's only, it's a split party. There's not a whole lot saving here. You could have killed him. So, you stab it, you're right close to it. Um, oh, wow. Are they two guys? Okay. Using the attack. Okay, so you can roll a speed defense if you want to try and maneuver away from her. It. Um, all right, so let's cross. I have one blessing of Hayden left. Mm -hmm. I'm going to use that to knock it down to 24. Okay. And then I'm specialized, so that would knock it down to 18. Okay. So, I'm going to try. That's a chance. Better than no chance. Oh, oh you would have just had to buy it down one more time. No. Alright, so she lashes out. It lashes out. Boom! Hits you. You got armor. It's going to do. Uh, let's see here. It does 12 points of damage before armor. And as an additional debuff, as part of the normal attack, if successful, she blinds the foe up for up to one minute. Blinds. All tasks of the blinded creature are hindered by two steps. You have to make a might defense roll to overcome it on your turn. Jeez. You are now ice blinded. All right, yip yap. Yes, you are frozen. And as a part of that, you need to do a mic defense roll to try and break free. And it's a, is it twenty seven? Uh, no, she's active twenty seven. You're just looking at a twenty one to break out of this ice. Okay, so I'm gonna use my free mic muscle of iron. Bring down a 15. Okay. Uh, a 17. Boom! <laughs> Free from the ice! Of course. That was your action. My hot, steamy muscles melted this ice. <laughs> and now it's Rogoth's turn. <laughs> you feel like an ice cube hits you in the back of the head and you look back and see Yip Yap talking, talking trash. I thought I was ice blind. 
Oh yeah, your eyes blind. You don't know what's going on. But it's your turn, and you can make like a my defense roll to like resist what? the ice blindness. I'm lowering it down to a twenty-one to get rid of the debuffs. My blind. Now it rolls down to the twenty-one. Yeah. Let's see. Oh yeah, because I do it twice. But if it's twenty-one, your actions are also hindered by two. By two. Crap. So that actually makes it a twenty-seven. Sorry. Ice blind says Sorry. your actions are. Hindered by two. I was trying to be nice there for a second, then I realized that that debuff was built into it. If only an entire party. We're trying to catch up to y'all, man. <laughs> but no, man, this ain't right. Did one of you have a Drake? No. 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 He fell off the drakes, couldn't couldn't climb, and he wasn't he wasn't there. I wasn't here. Oh yeah. 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 Chipotle now Shoot. cries at the red fern and Amara has her Drake elsewhere. She may have already come up here trying to find this place when you were distracted going on other quests. You don't know. So it's just actions hindered by two, right? Right. So you can just swing wildly. So if if already you're looking at a twenty-seven, if that gets hindered by two more, oh, then you're looking at a thirty-three. Okay. So realistically, you you gotta break the ice blindness. Like that's, it's more feasible for you to be able to get out of ice blindness than it is to make attacks while you're ice blind. Does that make sense? Mm. Like it'd be a 33 difficulty to try and make an attack while you're blind. It'd be a 27 oh, difficulty man. to try and break it. I do bring it down four times though. So to break it, you're coming down four times from 27 to... <laughs> we do this? Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> All the time. Oh, yeah, see. So from 27 to 24, from 24 to 21, to 18 to 15. To 15, so yeah. they bring it back up twice because I'm ice blind to 21. No, that, that was from 27. That was from 27? Yeah, I counted all the way down from your increased difficulty. Oh. Because you're only at a 21 difficulty to roll out of ice blindness. You're not attacking her. You're just trying to free yourself. Oh, 21 difficulty right now. Oh, right. Okay. And it got stacked up two times because of the difficulty being harder. So you just came back down from 27 to 15. 27 to 15. Yeah. Well, I, okay, never mind. It only does that twice then because I was thinking of smashing to like to attack her. Yeah. All right, so. Hey. And this is a might roll, so you automatically have an edge, yeah. which takes it down from 15 to 12, right? No, I have count that? already counted that in feet of strength. I so gotcha. Okay. Both of those went down from 27 to 21. So each this one brings down. it down to 15. No, no. So, hold on. You're attacking her? No. You're trying to free yourself? I'm trying to free myself, yeah. Okay, so... You've already used your edge, which was three, right? Yeah. So let me give you this back. Okay. And I'll explain in just a second. So you've come down four. For, so from 27 down to 15, that was the four. And then you're giving me these four right here, these four might points to bring it down two more times? Yes. Okay, so from 15 to 12, and then from mm -hmm. 12 to nine. So nine's what you have to roll. Okay. All right. Um, oh, no, son. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was game over, man. I was just going to throw away. And I have to watch what happened. 18. Nice. 
So you're like, oh, and your eyes come back. You like break all the, the frozen crud off of your face, and you see her again. All right. Now, you see her charging. Yip Yap's free. You're no longer ice blind. What do you do? Do you run or do you defend? I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to keep it 100. I'm going to run. Do you tell Rogoth that you're going to run? <laughs> no. He's looking the other way. I need someone to stay behind. Hey, I don't have to run faster than the bear. Exactly. <laughs> That's not... Oh yeah. We're the team. We're the team. Alright. Looking out for number one. Always. Okay. So the bear's charging. You've both successfully broken free. What I'm gonna allow is that you can attack if you want to. Okay. And this is how we're gonna decide it. Get out of D4. Only Ronnie. <laughs> I like your attention to detail though, Casey. All right, roll that D4. Three and four means that she's going to attack you. One and two, you're going to attack her. Whoa! All right. So you're going to be able to attack. With that attack, she's going to be entertained by him for the moment. If he's successful with his attack. All right. So where am I running to is the question. That large black mountain that he told you about. Okay. Yeah. So fifteen. She's she's mean. She's mean. <laughs> I don't like her anymore. Fifteen. Twelve. Nine. Okay. Nine. Nineteen. Wow. And, hold up. Increased effects. A roll of 19 is counts as a 20. Wow. Yeah. Look at you. Go. All right. So that will mean either four additional points of damage or a major effect. Major effect, man. She's expensive. All right. So you want to bring down her difficulty yes. a little bit here. All right. So you're going to be able to escape because you're running away while he's entertaining her. Sweet. She's getting a major effect on her. So you run away. And that's as still clashing, right? Yeah. Okay. So as he's clashing with this oversized polar bear, and he's just like, I'm not going anywhere. Ah! And there's this flaming sword that's like, Boom! Spurs! You hear in the distance. No, you don't see. He's not, he doesn't have the same personality. Oh. It's Big Callus is. What is it like now inside the sword? He's like, Burn! Bear, burn! No, he's more like. The genie of the armor and that, like, he doesn't really care. Yeah, okay, whatever. we're burning stuff. Yeah. So the sword just kind of says, okay, let's burn some yeah, stuff. Yeah, this is fun. This is great. Thanks for <laughs> using me. All this has been <laughs> I'm yeah. glad I'm useful to you, at least. No, no. Not even really. <laughs> Something that sounds like it's an unhealthy healthy. relationship. It is very <laughs> All right. So you see the fire in the distance as you're just like, yip, yip, run it, yip, yip, run it. Mm -hmm. And then you get, get that to, cardio. you find the, the blackened mountain that you're looking for. Of course and I And you see that there are two large guards. They have grayish skin, black hair, bone protrusions oh, coming sorry. from their skin. They stand before this gated door. They have yet to see you. What do you do? Disguise. I want to disguise myself as one of them. Yes, I have disguise. I'm trained in it. Hey, let's get this dove. Didn't see that coming. Let's get this dove. All right, so your difficulty right now is a 12. A 12? Can I lower it with anything? Uh, disguise would be under an intellect, right? I suppose so. So you'd use intellect to lower it. Boom. It's now a 6. It's now a 3. Yes. You're just a magical man. All right. Three. A 16. So you walk up and you're like, yo, I'm the guy that's here working for the boss now. Pay attention, pay attention. I'm going to yep. need you to catch up. 
All right. So he told me I need to be in there. Mm -hmm. And you need to guard this big door. Yes. Exactly. And let, matter of fact, I'm actually here to inspect weapons as well. So I'm going to need that, that weapon you have. It looks at its hands. You see that on your elbow? Yes. Yes, break it off. I need to inspect it. <laughs> yes. Give me that. I mean, thank you, sir. <laughs> and you start like moonwalking inside. Boom. As you get into like the base of this really tall tower. And you start to walk around. And like look at stuff. Like, Mission Impossible theme too? Yeah. Dun, 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 yeah, yeah, looking at stuff. Da, da, da. Dude, that's me. I'm like James Bond. Small. As you are walking down the tower, you get like all the, you know what cackles are on the back of your neck, all those little hairs? They like start standing. Mm -hmm. Spidey sense. And like tinnitus starts ringing in your ears as you hear, Yo, yip, yip, in the house. Yeah, what? I walked in the tower. What, what? And you're just like, <laughs> yep, yep. Yeah, yep, yep, it's back. Yep, yep, it's back. <laughs> You're about a floor above me right now. I don't hate yep, yep. I just don't want to be near the danger he caused. Yeah, like, you know. He, can do, he doesn't need my help with that, but. Yes, I do! We can journey together. We're a team! Alright, so you see the stairway, the stairwell that's leading down to you, mm -hmm. and you see. <gasps> Oh man, it's Ravina Crescent Fire. Mm -hmm. That girl with that sun tattooed on her face. Oh yeah. Yeah, and then it's no. You have a tattoo as well. Are you inside the crystal or outside the crystal? I'm in the crystal. I thought you got out of it. No. Didn't you use an action to get out of it? I did not. Oh. But you went back in. Yeah. And she's just got some cool mm -hmm. bling. Really uh -huh. shiny, expensive uh -huh. looking <laughs> bling around her neck. Okay. Like, that would... Well, I want to go up to him yeah. in my disguise and scare them. Can I roll to scare them? You basically just... Boo, it was me. We heard you coming. <laughs> boo! He's going to yeah. thank you guys. <laughs> He's like, boo, got you. <laughs> and they're like, we know it was you. Oh, well, that was a good That was a good one. Good See? burn. Good that burn. That's that like an Aiden burn. Prank. I got them. You're like, yo. I like this disguise, though. I'm tall. Yeah, yeah no, no. They just, you just convinced them that you worked with them. What? That's not disguise. How would a a foot tall creature disguise itself as like a seven foot tall monstrous thing? I uh, oh, did you remember Wait, Mark? were they even bad? Maybe, maybe not. You don't really know. Mark? You didn't ask. You just yeah. tricked them, got, had them uh, break point. themselves, yeah. and then you went in. I got their elbow piece. Yeah. Does that count as a weapon? Where are the stats? It's a piece of bone in your hand. Kind of like that bone that's hanging around your neck. I add it to the stat. Or that other head that you've got. Like, you've just got body parts you're collecting. It's I'm Rogoth. making a sculpture. So Rogoth is not with him. No. no. Yep, yep. Uh, hey, where's Rogoth? Who's that? <laughs> uh, uh, who's that? Who's Rogoth? The person that left with you, is he still with you? I don't know what you're talking about. Okay, maybe I don't like you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I, actually, I have a question too. Where's Scully? Why would I know where Scully is? I don't, oh, that's true. Why would you even think to ask me where Scully is? Don't be metagaming. <laughs> it's my fault. It's, my fault. it's not metagaming. It, okay, it, it is. is. <laughs> that's all it is. That's what it's called. Um. Okay, I'll admit. I know where he is, but I'm not going to tell you. Because he's doing import, important stuff. Yeah, huh? I'm not following the logic. <laughs> I, I can't. It's very, also, it's, it's very important. Talking to you is just <laughs> exhausting and frustrating. And I don't really want to do it anymore. So let's all walk in silence. <laughs> now you notice that there's a stairwell going from this base floor that continues to go down into another chamber. 
And that's where we need to go. That is where you are heading. Yes. Because the voice of the crystal continues to say, Just a little bit further. We're almost there. Yes. Yossi, you found it. As you walk That's not into, the, that isn't the voice that he did though. Oh no, that was the voice that I did of him doing a voice. Okay, that's fine. Yes, he sounds kind of like that fellow, John Hurt. That's who. I, that's I in my head. head. That's what he sounds like. I need to come up with a voice. For He's him. the war doctor. <laughs> you enter a chamber, and as you look into the chamber, there are well lit objects within these large glass prisms. Mm -hmm. What are they? Uh, I do know what those are, right? Uh, you know that there are objects there. I hang out here all the time. Are there uh, crystal-like beings within all of these objects as well? No, I think I'm the only one here. Okay. I come from a far-off place. Far-off place. What, where is it? In a galaxy far, far away. It is in a different realm, you might say. Okay. With more things right. like me. You look into the I glass objects. The name of the realm. <laughs> and the light that shines upon them, you actually see what looks like a large warhammer. Mmm, warhammer. In the, in the next chamber, you see a morning star mace. The one past that. You see twin blades. Then you see hook chain. It's like a chain with a hook, like a sickle kind of thing on the end of it. Um, and then you see a chakram. Oh. Ta da! <laughs> Each inside of these glass chambers. Do we want to take these weapons? So that chakram would be like the, you know, like the Xena looking thing. Yeah. No one got my mm -hmm. reference. I got it. I yeah, okay. just wanted to make sure everybody knew. It's been a while, so I don't really remember how she did it. I think if I'm going to take anything, I'm probably going to take that. Because I've already got an axe and a sword. Can you bounce it off a bunch of enemies at once like Daggers. that? Or do you have to be super proficient? So you, you want to just break this thing open and, or open it? I don't want to break it if I don't have to. It seems to just have like a little, like one of those little brass latch hooks. It doesn't seem to be locked. Mm. You just open it and it opens up. Perhaps I'll roll perception to make sure these things aren't booby trapped. I could perceive if you want. I know how to do that. Okay. Do you, okay. Think, it's, do you think it's safe for us to open these containers? I have and... no idea. All right. So we take these things. You want to you roll your perception there? Hmm? I have no idea. What is it? Okay. No idea. I went in for a routine surgery and I woke up. Say <laughs> what? I rolled a. Uh, <laughs> uh, oh my gosh. Alright, so. Shady's back. You said the chakram? Yeah. And you roll nine. Um, you can tell that it's a medium weapon. Uh, it does have a energy kind of like emanating from it. Uh, it seems to be a very powerful weapon with a strong, sturdy forging. Okay. That's what you sense from it. Um, Ravina. Mm -hmm. There's a hammer, morning star, twin blade, and a hook and chain that are in the other chambers. You can open them or just ignore them. The morning star. Morning star mace. Okay. Do you want to roll to perceive anything better? Just open it up and, and take it out. Wait, what's that supposed to be perceived? So I had to come out. Okay. I would have to perceive them <laughs> within the crystal. But if you guys are just going to act before I perceive, then it doesn't really matter. We're perceiving. So. Yeah. Oh. Well, they could have waited on you, but you're just sitting there, you know, inside the crystal doing your own thing. I just let them perceive their own life. Okay. Do I have to rub the crystal, or do you just come yeah. out? Yeah, rub it the right he, can, he can come out on his own. It's really I his know, own she choice. She has to rub it. 
<laughs> no, it's fine. You don't have to run. All right. Oh, just speak to it gently. I just kind of shake it. Like, ah. Get out. <laughs> you just shake it. <laughs> get out. Just tap on it. <laughs> Give it a little tap tap. All right, do you come out? Do you sing the song while you're coming out? Uh, I'm coming out. No, uh oh. No. I haven't been to Earth. But in John Hurt's voice. I'm coming out. No, I don't sound like that. Oh, okay. Does I sound like a How does he sound? Like me. Oh, yeah. Okay. I want well, come the on out. I'm coming out. No. I'm coming out. So, <laughs> do you perceive anything? Uh, yeah. Um, I have per trained in perception. All right, so give me a roll. All right, uh, trained in perception. So, you can tell that it's a medium weapon. It seems very sturdy and strong. And you sense this great urge to use it. I am incapable of using it. Because it's a medium? Yep. Keep looking around the room if you want. Okay. Sucks to suck. Uh, now, Crystal Man. Coo. Crystalline. Crystalline Man. You see a Warhammer, a Morning Star, twin blades, and a hook and chain in these chambers. And they, you're like, I think I've seen these things before. I, but I'm not I really shall sure. roll to try and remember. Using my powers of remembering, I have a good memory. It says so on one of these sheets. Yes, anything you've experienced, you can remember. That's uh, true. Oh, I can erase memories. That's cool. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, have the crystal. I've already done that. I thought I had the. It was the advantage from being intellectual. I was just an inherent. Uh, it's under your yeah. It's under your uh, your descriptor. Okay, cool. Um, <coughs> let me roll for that. Uh, All right. I'm so you're gonna roll against an eighteen. Oh, that's a pretty high. That's pretty high. I remember what these are about. But you've got. Um, I got some points. I can put into it. How many points? To get to, uh, well, you have an uh, edge of two in int. Yeah, so that's two. All right, so you only have to give me one for your first points down. Okay. So that takes it down to a 15. Okay. That's good. That's if good. you give me two more, then I'll take it down to a 12. I'll do it. If you give me two more, no. I'll take it down to a nine. That's what we did last time, right? It and could be. Failed. Maybe. You're skilled in perception. I don't know if perception would be helping to... He's using it to remember. Oh. Eleven! It's higher than nine! I did it. I did it. Do you remember that when you materialized in this realm... Yeah, yeah. There was a man. Uh, yeah. This man with yeah. long gray hair. I remember. I was like, what's hair? His eyes were really funny what because they were almost like glowing yeah. white but with no pupils. Yeah. But that didn't seem weird I, to you because yeah, yeah, you've never yeah. seen pupils. Yeah, yeah. I remember the glowy bit. And you were like, what am I doing here? And he's like, I am summoning things from other realms. You should be useful at some point, mayhaps. And then he tapped you and mayhaps. forced ah. you to turn into the crystal, which he put into a lockbox for later usage and experimentation. So he forced me But to inside the crystal, you heard other people yeah. responding to him as Lord Magus Abraxas. Magus, the Magus. Abraxas. Do you know him? Not familiar. He's a lord, apparently. Mm -hmm. He imprisoned me into the crystal, and uh, I don't know how. I guess you did rub it the right way and it came I came out. Did I know like am I do I know Magus? All you know is that there are here tell night terrors that they tell of stories of the north, that there's some madman who does experiments on things yes. a magician who turns people into beasts. He summoned me mm -hmm. from my own realm here. And this word you hear, you're like realm. 
summoned you from your realm. Like that's what he's part of the region, or you know, like to you, it would seem really strange that he's talking about being summoned from the realm. Yeah, wherever my realm is, it's far away from here because it's nothing like your realm. Well, we've met all manner of strange beings on this trip, so. Wait, you saying I'm a strange being? You're a strange being. I to you, I might be. You are. I just said so. We're all strange. Yes. We're all strange when we're a stranger. <laughs> Everyone's strange when you're on your I own. agree with this thing that's singing to us. <laughs> it's Aiden. It's Aiden? Aiden loves all. Is this the Aiden you speak of? Aiden <laughs> loves all of us. All right. So, that's what you got from your remembering. And you've chosen not to look inside of any of these cases with these big weapons in them, right? I could scan them. In the area. <laughs> um, with that said, I would be able to tell you now, uh, Ravina. What were you saying? You cannot hold a medium-sized weapon. You can only hold a light weapon. I am. I don't. Hold medium weapons. and heavy. I cannot. I, I have I marked off. All right. And he as well can only hold light weapons. Were the chakrams? Those were immediate. The chakram? Uh, the throwing circle? Yeah. Uh, hang on a second. So he would be able to tell you that the twin blades, a pair of gladius swords, are light weapons. Just from a quick scan of the area. And he would be able to tell you. I'll take the twin blades. The chakram is a medium. Warhammer medium. Star. Medium and the hook and chains. It's a heavy weapon. So the hook and chain is actually the heaviest weapon. The uh, twin blades are light. The Chakram and the Morning Star and the Warhammer are medium. So, you take the twin blades out? Yeah. Cool. Yip yap. Yep. You up in this room too, looking at them like staking weapons and stuff. Yep. And you hearing him saying, that's medium, that's heavy. What's heavy? The hook and chain. What is that like? It's a large chain with a sickle-like hook on the end of it. That's Turn heavy? It it's heavy. The chain's heavy. Well, I'm a strong man. You strong little thing. So let me get that. Any perceiving or just open it up and take it? Let me perceive. <laughs> let me perceive its power. An 11. What do I perceive about it? That it's a heavy weapon. Made of a chain and a hook, and you like it. I do like it. Give me that. Just wrap it around yourself a bunch of times because this is like a long chain. You just like. <laughs> do I get a bonus like to armor? Chain. It ain't even like a little itty bitty chain. It's like a thick chain. Do I get a bonus to armor then? It's wrapped. It's a chain wrapped around me. That's a layer of armor, buddy. No. Chain armor. What? But it is a heavy weapon. So there you go. All right. That's what you've all perceived. That's what you know. And you hear a rumbling from below this corridor. Like, ah, there's nothing really to compare it to in your, in your era. You just hear this like, and like the whole place seems to kind of rumble with this continuous explosive sound. I hope you enjoyed this week's episode of Starfall. If you did, be sure to head on over to our website at www.saturdaynightgaming 
www.ltlc.com and check out some of our other cool games. Also, make sure to like, share, and subscribe on all of our social media platforms. I hope you have a fantastic week, and until next time, this is Laura Hibbard with Saturday Night Gaming signing off.